I still have not seen this book yet. I haven't opened it. What we've got here is that fold-out sheet. Now, because this sheet is so large, I'm going to have to take it in, sec in sections. And it's not all interesting. Uh, well, this looks like it might be invaluable. Uh, and that, in that, I mean, it's going to show the rigging, I think, really well. I think. Now, I've already got the camera all preset and pre-focused exactly for this distance. For you camera buffs, this is uh, my 50 millimeter prime lens. Right now, check the monitor, it is set at f6.3, camera's uh, at 80 ISO, two hundredths of a second. I'm going to use my remote release, shutter release, so be, otherwise there's a chance I'll be shaking the camera when I squeeze the shutter. Uh, also, because there's a little tiny bit of uh, uh, camera shake when the mirror slaps up and down, there's going to be a one second delay from the time the mirror moves out of the way till the time the shutter goes off. That gives the camera a little bit uh, of time to stop shaking or vibrating. It's just very, very slight. It, I'm just doing the best I can here. Uh, <clears throat> as it is, this is not that interesting, but we'll just, we'll just quickly go through it here. Oh, what I'm going to do is, in the video, I'm going to put each picture that I take on for about two seconds. So if you be ready with your mouse to click the pause button if you see something that's of interest to you. Otherwise it'll be into the next one. Okay, so I've got the monitor right there. You can't see it, of course. All right, we're going to start at the bow. The ship goes this way. This is how big it would be if it was a 350 scale model. It'd be a pretty impressive ship. And, and you can get them that way, and they're a lot, lot cheaper than the uh, 200 scale. Anyway, here we go. This, this looks about right. Okay. Now we'll move over. And we're from here, so we're going to go over to here. We don't want to miss anything. Yeah, you, you're going to be able to see the rigging really clear here. Get my fingers out of it, that is. Okay. Now. It's pretty hard to get it all in here. What's going to be of most interest? I guess the hull and the superstructure. And we'll miss a tiny little bit of the uh, top here. Just a tiny little bit. And the stern. Now I lost my remote. Okay, here we go. Just pull this down so we can see that. All right. Now we'll go the other way here. This will be looking straight down on the ship. Might be a little, little bit more interesting. Let's start at the bow and go back. And just the stern. Now 
down here there's just a few this this little might be a bit of interest here I don't want to, I want to be careful that I don't accidentally hook on something with the paper and like my ladder is coming down the side of the Bismarck there okay now, now notice all the rigging here and there's another shot that gets shows the rigging pretty good this this will be I believe it will be helpful when we get to the point of having to do the rigging 20 years from now. Now the other side, it's just got a lot of little things like, uh, oh, lifeboats. I'm, I'm not going to do everything. I'm just going to snap a few pictures here so that you can see what we've got. Show some of the lights. Now these uh, these are not to 350 scale. These are uh, a much larger scale. 150. What the last pictures you just saw were to 150 scale. Uh, the turrets wouldn't be this big. I'll just let's do a shot of the turrets here. This is not going to be real clear. It's almost like a blueprint. You know how blueprints are not real clear. Okay. Now, to do the book, I'm going to set up differently. I'm going to uh, put it under glass, the way I did the manual for the Bismarck a year and a half ago. And I did each page s separately. So that's what we'll do with the, with the book here. I'm going to have to readjust the camera because the whole thing won't fit in. And also I want to make sure that the lights do not reflect off the glass and back up into the lens. So there's going to be a, a little bit of readjusting going on here. Okay, I've got a sheet of glass. It's an old uh, piece of glass out of an old storm door that we don't have anymore. And the top part of it has a a bad scratch up here so I got to remember to keep my uh, my book down here in the, in this part of it. I cleaned it off with Windex so it should be fairly good here and uh, here we go with uh, photo number one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open the book up. This is going to be very a little bit time consuming so this is the first time I've opened it by the way at least all the way. And I'm just going to go systematically through it here and uh, the idea is not so that you get to not have to buy this book it's to make you want to buy it especially if you're building the hood. Uh, that's the whole idea. And this is the way it's going to go. And photo number two. And so it's going to go. And I'm going to I'm going to leave them on for about three seconds. So be ready with your pause button if you want to see something for any length of time. You know what? That one's going to be, uh, that one is going to really be uh, uh, underexposed here because the light meter was reading off of the white. 
Maybe I should uh, put something dark in there and redo it. I might have to redo some of these. I want them to be as good as possible. So I'm, I'm going to redo this one. You'll probably notice the difference. And I reset the camera to overexpose and I did reshoot it. I'm probably going to have to uh, overexpose the entire book. Maybe not that much. Could be this one is over overexposed. Okay, so what do I think here now? What is my honest opinion? Well, first of all, just just I may as well just I may as well just say it. They printed this way too dark. I cannot believe that Stefan drew all of this wonderful detail and yet had it so dark that the detail just didn't pop out. I think that in all likelihood when when this was printed uh, you know like there, there's a lot of detail in here but you don't really see it and uh, um, this book I believe somewhere I saw the date on it um, Uh, I think it was, I think he, I think this is what you might call his early work, and this was his later work. And in this, the the detail is, is not buried in a bunch of dark area. You can actually see detail. This is, this book is much better. Would, would I buy this book knowing what I know now? I probably would, because I can see where it is going to be a really good reference book. Um, you know, what did something actually look like? I think that we will be able to find that, but uh, uh, my son is in the printing business. I'm going to ask him, is it possible that the printer, uh, when they printed Stefan's drawings, you might say used inks that were too dark? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a I don't know if I'm, I'm sounding disappointed. Maybe, maybe I am just a little bit disappointed. Uh, one thing I should tell you that absolutely every single snapshot I took, I, I slightly overexposed it in the camera, and then I photoshopped every single one to try and bring out detail in the dark areas. In other words, it would light, automatically lighten the dark areas. Um, like something like this. This is this is this is horrendously dark. It, it you know the, the the ship was not that it was not a almost a, a blue. I mean you know it it was gray. It wasn't blue. I don't think this was Stefan's fault. 
uh, you know, if uh, am I am I recommending it? I'm recommending it if you are making the hood, if you are building the hood, whatever scale, and if you can afford it. But if baby needs new shoes, uh, buy the shoes. I'm not going to say I'm not going to complain anymore about it. Uh, we we will be able to use some of the drawings, even even these dark ones. Um, you know, if I was to take and just photograph this one picture and then enhance this picture in Photoshop, it will look a lot better than it does in the book. Uh, okay, enough. Now this makes sense. Now here is something that has been bothering me ever since I put it on, and I don't know how I ended up doing it like this, but you can see how the platform is sloping down. It would be more horizontal. So I think I'm going to have to break this loose. I, I just tested a minute ago. I thought that maybe it had broken and sort of fallen that way, but it didn't. That's that's the way I glued it. And I, I don't know why I did not notice that. So like I say, I'm going to have to break that loose and just bend it up a little bit. I'm hoping that when I break it loose, it uh, it sort of stays in place. Otherwise, I'm going to have to sort of prop it up. And Anyway, let's try it. I'll put on the macro lens. Oh, that did not work as planned. Now I'm going to have to raise our little jig up just a little bit here. Be nice if I could get this in so that the old glue kind of matches up. Oh, by the way, on the surface here there's a uh, piece of uh, cereal box waxed paper. Because I don't want to be gluing our little uh, platform here to uh, the piece of Tony's model which is what this is that I'm using as a jig oh, does that have to come up just a little bit more maybe like that okay I think that looks pretty good doesn't look quite square there, I think it... Oh, it's too late to straighten it now. Well, I guess what you see is what you get. It is a lot better than it was, that's for sure. When I was editing out that last shot, I saw what appears to be scuffs, or is it maybe dust? Okay, we do have, we do have a scratch right there. And 
right here and here we have what appears to be maybe, I can almost feel it, maybe uh, CA glue touched on there and ran down or something. And there's definitely a scratch here. I don't want to be trying to patch up too much because, as I mentioned before, it's going to have a tendency to look blotchy. So it might almost be better to just leave that, and it would look it would look natural. But this this does doesn't look natural. This looks like a scratch. Now maybe the uh, captain wasn't being careful and he hit the dock when he was pulling in. Okay, here is something that I don't even pretend to be good at, and that is, you know, touching up or anything artistic like this. Now, I have been told that I sound like a very famous artist, but even that's not true. Uh, he sounds like me. Anyway, I'm just going to try and... got just a tiny little bit of hull red on here. I'm just going to... See if I can't just sort of dry brush it on here. That's dry brush? Well, I thought it was. And what about this little spot right here? Well, we'll see what happens when it dries. Give it about an hour. Now I know there's a bad scratch on the hull on the, on the on the bow rather on this side, so we'll just sort of move up there. And as long as there's paint on my brush, now what happened to you? Why why is that not covering? There, it's kind of disappeared now, kind of. It might blend in, even though it's not sprayed on. It's the same paint out of the same jar. to put the heat gun on that and dry it and then quickly put another one on. Maybe I should have sanded there because it's almost like a mini gouge. Don't know what I could have scraped on that. came off on my thumb. Should still be a little bit in my brush here. You know what? I don't think I did a good thing there. I think I removed what was in there. put the macro lens on take a close look my neighbors outside mowing their grass don't they know I just pushed record here this is my smallest brush just leave well enough alone. 
little bit of time has passed here now. I just had wanted to uh, fill in the crack. But I don't know if it's, I don't know, it almost looks worse than it did before. Well, let's let that dry. That super macro sure does move in, doesn't it? Well, we'll check this out tomorrow. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.